Hello, welcome to the Friday, July 29th, 2022 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. I posted a quick diary earlier today summarizing a research paper one of the students at our Sands Technology Institute College published earlier this week. It actually takes a preliminary observation by Boyan from last year. It was published as a diary back then. The issue Boyan noted in last year's diary was that Google Chrome's extension sync features was used as a cover channel by an extension installed into Google Chrome. Now, the student, uh, David uh, Preffer, uh, looked into this mechanism and how it can be exploited. David noticed that even without having control over the browser itself via a plugin or an extension, it is possible to just manipulate bookmarks and use the same sync channel that uh, this uh, plugin used. The cover channel David uncovered is quite capable and actually very difficult to detect as it uses the normal requests to Google's API to synchronize these malicious bookmarks. Basically, all he does is he takes any file on the system and then encodes it to work as a bookmark. Uh, there is also quite a bit of bandwidth available here. Uh, David showed that over 200,000 bookmarks actually may be used and the transfer rate is pretty high and only being throttled after a few ten thousands of bookmarks have been uh, synced. Take a look at David's uh, paper if you want to learn more about this and how to detect this particular cover channel. David also uh, published a GitHub repository uh, with a tool that he created in order to experiment with this channel. And maybe we'll have uh, David on a future podcast to talk a little bit more about this work. And Samba, the open source implementation of the SMB protocol, received a critical update that you probably want to apply quickly, in particular if you are relying on Samba as a domain controller. Samba is much more than just simple file sharing as it's often used and includes pretty much all major components that you typically associate with a Microsoft Windows network. Of particular interest with this update is CVE 2022-32744. This vulnerability allows an authenticated user uh, to change passwords for any other user. Now, uh, these requests are encrypted, but uh, the uh, K password D, that's the daemon responsible for actually changing the password, it's pretty flexible as to what key to actually use and uh, the user may supply information to actually pick the key and uh, with that, well, uh, of course, can create just an arbitrary password change request. This also applies to the administrator, so any user can change the administrator's account, which is a real nice privilege escalation. There's a second vulnerability here, CVE 2022-2031, that is also being patched with this update. It's also related to a slightly different password change vulnerability. So update soon and exploitation should be pretty straightforward in this case. And Apple yesterday found part of its IP address space routed to Russia via Russian telecom company Ross Telecom. As you may know, uh, Apple is rather lucky in owning an entire slash 8 of IPv4 address space, 17 slash 8, a small subnet of this, 1770. 960 was advertised by Ross Telecom. And since this advertisement was more specific than the slash nine that Apple usually advertises, the BGP advertisement from Ross Telecom took precedence. Now, Apple uh, usually uses AS714 uh, for its address space. Ross Telecom uses AS12389. It became a pretty obvious pretty quickly and of course with the current geopolitical situation a bgp hijack like this immediately raised alarms apple sort of fought back with a more specific announcement on its end and after 12 hours ross telecom withdrew the announcement 
Now, before you think uh, that there is sort of some sinister uh, nation state spying and so going on, Ross Telecom actually has a legitimate IP address uh, prefix 37 slash 19. So really just the first digit is different, a three instead of a one. So one possibility is that this was just a simple typo and well, from past experience, most BGP issues like this turn out to be innocent mistakes or uh, simple typos like this and nothing malicious. Of course, it would still be nice if Apple would protect its rather important prefix with route origin authorization. And I'll link to an article that talks more about this particular hijack and also route origin authorizations. Then we got a couple of noteworthy patches. Uh, Veritas released a patch for its backup product. It fixes 17 vulnerabilities of which two are rated uh, critical. The critical vulnerabilities do require authentication, but they do allow on the server arbitrary command execution or arbitrary file write. There are a number of uh, moderate or medium uh, level vulnerabilities as they call them that also patch arbitrary code execution vulnerabilities and arbitrary file read and write issues, but they only affect the client. IBM also patched a number of vulnerabilities in IBM Rational Clear case, as well as the QRadar seam. Some of these are due to outdated components they had uh, in uh, these uh, products, in particular the XPath uh, library. And uh, yeah, that's a library that's being used to, to parse XML. And this vulnerability could be used for arbitrary code execution. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks for listening. And uh, as always, if you have any feedback, please let me know. Let your friends know about this podcast. Post on social media. I'm doing it because people are listening to it. And talk to you again on Monday. Bye.